in this video, I'm going to give you a really quick overview into Navigation Component, which is both a tool and an API for creating and editing the navigation flows inside of your application. Prior to Navigation Component, it was all on you. You would create the code to handle the UI event that triggered something, and then you'd create an intent, you'd launch an activity, you'd do the fragment transition, whatever. Navigation component automates a lot of this for you. You use the tool to create these destination fragments and then the actions that take you, that navigate you between these destinations. And then in your code, a particular UI event may trigger one of these things and you just say, okay, I've got that action I defined, navigate using that action and you're good to go. So I want to take you through a quick overview of some of the classes and APIs that you'll deal with as well as a design tool. But let's start out by creating an application. One of the great things about recent releases of Android Studio, starting with 3.6, is that they come built in with templates that handle a lot of the details of setting up navigation for you. You can do it without these templates, but if you're starting a new application, it's a lot easier to start with this sort of groundwork. So we're going to build a couple of applications, just sort of poke around and see what you get with that. So if you go into Android Studio, I'm running 4.0 here. It'll look something similar for you if you're using a different version. We'll start a new Android Studio project, and we'll just choose Basic Activity. We'll set that up. We'll say Nav Sample. It'll launch a window. It'll load. It'll build. So when this finally comes up, into being and everything's ready to go, um, then we can go ahead and run it and see what we get. All right, so we can run the application, go ahead and build it, and that will launch the emulator. And we've got our application. All right, so we have two fragments here, two destinations that we're gonna navigate between. We click on the button, we go to the next one, we click on the button in that other fragment, and we go to the previous one. Next, previous, or we can also hit the back button. That's already plugged in to go back to the previous destination. Now let's see what's actually going on. If you go to the resources folder, you can click on this new thing with navigation component. We have navigation resources. So if you go into there, you can take a look at NavGraph and pull up the design view and you can see what's going on. So we have first fragment and second fragment. These are the two destinations in your application. First fragments, you can click on this and you see some of the properties there. Second fragment, the first fragment is set up as the default or the home destination. Second fragment is just an additional destination and each of these are linked to fragments that support the content in those destinations. The other thing you see here are these arrows. These are actions. These define the navigation to different destinations in your application and you can do things like specify the arguments that should be passed when you navigate uh, between those destinations using that action. And this is the action that you will then trigger inside of your application code. This does not actually navigate to that new destination. Rather, it defines that there is an action that you can take that will navigate there, and the logic in your code is gonna trigger when that action takes place. So the user clicks on a button, and in the click listener, you would then pull up the information about the navigation to that destination, and then navigate appropriately. All right, I wanna do one other application here. So let's create another new project. Let's go in here, and let's go to the navigation drawer activity. And we'll call this nav drawer and wait for that to load. All right, so this one is a little different. If we go into the navigation area, we see there are three destinations defined, but no actions to go between them. Instead, we're going to use the drawer in this activity to navigate between them. So if we go ahead and run the application, we can see how that works. So here we are in our activity. This is the home fragment. That is the home destination, the default destination when the activity first starts up. And you can see that we have an action bar with a menu and that pops up the navigation drawer. Now we can click on these and that navigates to the destination. There's a neat mechanism inside navigation component that automatically hooks up those menu items in the navigation drawer with the destination in the application, sort of save you a lot of boilerplate code for actually tri triggering those navigation actions. All right, so I want to look at what the view hierarchy looks like for this application in particular. So if we pull up the layout inspector, so we go to the tools menu, layout inspector. So here we are in our 
application looking at the view hierarchy. So the thing I wanted to look at is what all the different pieces are inside of here. So if we open this up, we have lots of things going on in the UI, of course. All right. So first of all, let's start with our content view. When you do a set content view, it's sort of everything inside of here. So let's step, take one step down from there. Drawer layout, that's the UI of your drawer plus all of the content for your application, the app bar, uh, the toolbar, all that stuff. Inside of that is the coordinator layout. So you can see in the, in the screenshot uh, where we have that blue outline that is essentially the geometry of the thing that we're looking at just to sort of anchor you in the pieces that we're talking about. Coordinator layout that has the app bar layout with the toolbar inside of it, has a constraint layout where the content of your actually, of, of your fragments of your activity actually are. Um, and then the, fla the fab, the uh, floating action button. Uh, and uh, then we have this navigation view thing, and that is um, the navigation drawer. Now, the thing I wanted to look at here, so we have the constraint layout, we have nav host fragment. So this is an important piece. This is the container. This is one of the magic pieces that Navigation Component provides. This is the container in which your content is swapped out. When you navigate between destinations, those destinations are added into the nav host fragment. So it'll remove one fragment and it'll add another inside of that. So nav host fragment is something that it creates. And that is what uh, hosts the content that you then basically swap in and out as you navigate through your application during the run of the, that application on the device. So nav host fragment, and then the constraint layout where the layout actually is where you have your, you know, your constraint layout, um, the text view, whatever it is you have inside your UI. You have the floating action button, of course, and then you have this navigation view, which currently is off to the left. It is off screen because we haven't triggered uh, the action bar. If you uh, actually ask for that uh, navigation drawer to open, then it'll open, it'll slide over, um, and we could see that on the screen. And then inside of that, we actually have the, the menu items there that specify which of those destinations we want to navigate to. So I wanted to quickly talk about some of the pieces that we've seen. I frankly found it kind of confusing, all of the different API pieces that were called some variation on nav or navigation. So I thought it would be useful to quickly walk through what some of those pieces are and how they relate to each other. So first of all, over on the right, you see this a uh, really quick sketch of what the UI looks like. You have a toolbar at the top, and then you have that nav host fragment. That, again, is the container in which the fragments are replaced as you navigate through your activity. Uh, and we start out with this destination zero there. So nav host fragment, that's the container for the destinations that navigation component is swapping in and out. Nav controller is an internal piece in navigation component that actually does the navigation. So if you hear of nav controller, that's kind of the conductor of uh, exactly what's going on there. When you navigate, when you go to a destination, nav controller is in charge of that activity. Uh, navigation view, this one I found really confusing because it kind of relates, but it kind of doesn't. It's not inside the nav host fragment. It's not part of a navigation component. It existed before navigation component. And it's talking about the menu that is in the navigation drawer. So we're using it in this activity that we just created in the application we were just playing with. Um, and it will drive when you select um, the menu items in navigation drawer, it will drive to the different destinations that we have in our application. Um, but it's really kind of a separate thing. It's not, uh, it's not part of navigation component itself. Instead, it interacts with the pieces of navigation component. And then finally, navigation UI. Um, this is a responsible in the navigation component um, library for updating content that is outside nav host fragments. So most of what you see in the UI that is related to the navigation or application is going to appear inside of nav host fragment. But there are other pieces at play here. There is obviously the navigation drawer that we talked about, but also what about uh, uh, tabs that contain information about where you're at, like the bottom nav bar or navigation view. Uh, they need to know when things have updated. The navigation view, of course, needs to be updated. Its UI that's currently sitting off the screen needs to know that you have navigated to a new destination. So the navigation UI is in charge of that part of it.
This was a really quick overview of Navigation Component, a way that makes it much easier for you to create and edit the navigations inside of your application. There's much more to the tool and to the APIs that I haven't gone into today, including things like transition animations, deep links, the ability to pass args between these destinations. We'll cover some of that in upcoming episodes, or you can also check out some of the resources down below for things that you can read or examples and sample code that you can see to see how to do this in your application. If you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.